I'm here today to provide five tips for providing a strong marriage-based green card case. Please note this video is not to be construed as legal advice. If you do require legal advice, please seek counsel from a qualified immigration attorney. Hi, my name is Stephanie DiPietro and I'm an immigration attorney. I'm here today to provide five tips for providing a strong marriage-based green card case. Tip number one, many of the documents you'll be providing to immigration may be in a language other than English. It could be your birth certificate, it could be your marriage certificate. What do you do? Immigration requires that you provide a certified English translation of that birth certificate or that marriage certificate that's in another language other than English. The rules for what's required in a certified translation being submitted to UCIS can be found at 8 CFR 103.2. Essentially, it says that first, it must be a full English translation of the document. So it can't just be what your translator feels like translating or what you want seen on the translation. It has to be every single word on that page. It should look like a mirror of the translation. Second of all, the translator must be competent in both English and the foreign language that they're translating from. Thirdly, they must provide a certificate of accurate translation in which they're basically attesting to immigration that they are competent to do this translation from the foreign language into English. Typically, I would put on top the English translated document followed by the certificate of accurate translation followed lastly by document in the original foreign language. Please note the document doesn't need to be notarized. However, the person providing the translation can't be yourself. Don't use Google Translate, nor should the translation be done by an interested party. That's why I typically recommend a professional translation company to ensure that your translation meets UCIS's requirements. Because if it doesn't, you may end up with further delays in your case or a request for further evidence where immigration comes back and says, get me an accurate, a better translation of this document than you provided with your original submission. Tip number two, make sure that you have documentation to show that the relationship is qualified for a green card based on marriage. First of all, it would be documentation showing that the petitioner is either a U.S. citizen or a green card holder. If they are a U.S. citizen, the simplest documentation may be if they were born in the United States, their birth certificate. If they also have a U.S. passport, the biographic page of the U.S. passport. If they are a naturalized U.S. citizen, copy of their naturalization certificate. If at the time they naturalized, they happen to also change their name. Don't forget to also include the other piece of paper that came with your naturalization certificate, the certificate of name change. Maybe the individual acquired citizenship through their parents. Make sure to provide your certificate of citizenship in that case. Also providing the biographic page of your U.S. passport could establish U.S. citizenship. If instead you are applying for your spouse as a green card holder, a clear copy of both the front and the back of your green card. Additionally, both parties, the petitioner and the beneficiary, need to show that they are free to marry, meaning that they are married at this time to no other people. If it's your first marriage, then all you're simply doing is showing the marriage certificate between the petitioner and the beneficiary. However, if either party has been previously married, Immigration needs a certified copy of the divorce judgment. For all these documents, keep in mind that you want to send copies to immigration. If immigration requires to see an original document, they'll ask for it. Or if you're scheduled for a green card appointment, then bring the original document. Never mail the original document to immigration unless asked because you simply won't get it back. Tip number three, for those individuals who are married after having been placed in removal, deportation, or exclusion proceedings, basically meaning you went before an immigration judge, if that occurred before your marriage, keep in mind your case, your marriage, is going to be held at a higher level of scrutiny meaning that the officer is going to be concerned about whether this marriage was entered into at a true love 
and wanting to share the rest of your life with that party, or whether it was merely an attempt to get out of immigration proceedings. Uh, therefore, immigration does require a bona fide marriage exemption affidavit to be completed by both the petitioner and the beneficiary. If you have questions on how to prepare such an affidavit, I strongly recommend you seek immigration counsel. Number four, joint documents. For every couple, the joint documents you'll be providing to immigration may vary a little bit. But generally across the board, immigration likes to see, first of all, that where you're residing, be it a house, be it an apartment, is in both names. So that may be providing a lease or a letter from a landlord. Secondly, they like to see financial documents, meaning that you're financially intertwining your lives together. This could be in the form of a joint bank account, a joint checking account. If either of you are employed and your employer offers retirement benefits, that could be another way. And one spouse is listed as the beneficiary of that retirement policy. That is another joint document for immigration purposes. Also, immigration will look at your insurances, medical, health, car insurance, dental, vision. Do you have the same policy together or do you have separate policies? Additionally, immigration will look at your tax return. That seems to be the most common problem I tend to find with people is that they will have filed their taxes as single or head of household when they're actually married. It's very, very important that once you are married that you file your tax return as married. It could be married jointly, it could be married separately, but definitely the marital status should be married. Other joint documents can be maybe a gym membership that you both have together as a family. Maybe you have a pet and you took this pet to the vet or you adopted the pet together. That happened a lot during the pandemic. That can also be used as a joint document. Tip number five, when you file your initial submission, also the beneficiary should include their sealed medical exam done by a designated civil surgeon. UCIS presently has made sealed medical exams no longer expire, which is great. So if they introduce a new addition to the form after you filed, you do not have to go back and get that sealed medical exam done again. However, if you don't file with a sealed medical exam, be prepared to get a request for further evidence. A request for further evidence not only slows down your case, but also increases increases the possible chance of denial if immigration fails to match your timely filed sealed medical exam with the rest of your case. Now, I hope you found these five tips to filing a strong marriage-based case helpful.